Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to SimTech channel. In this tutorial on components of an electrical substation, we're going to talk about reactors. Reactors, as you can see here, is one of the most valuable electrical component found in substation. Now, what is the use of reactors? Yes, that is what we're going to found at the end of this tutorial. Now, if you look around in every electrical substation, you're going to find something that look like this. These are reactors. Right now, what are the role of reactors? What are they used for in electrical substation? Well, that is what we're going to find out in this tutorial. So stick around until the end of this tutorial and you're going to know exactly what are the use of reactors and why are they so important in power system. And if you find this tutorial useful, please don't forget to subscribe to SimTech channel and give this tutorial a thumbs up. That will be highly appreciated. So to put this simply, uh, reactors are used to control short circuit current in very large power system network. So if you've got a big power system network like a substation in tune of a mega MVA, and you have to have reactors in place to control that short circuit current. If you don't, then the short circuit current can cause damages to other electrical component, and this will extend the power outage to even longer. So in case you have a short circuit just occurring on the transformer, and the reactor should be able to limit that short circuit current so that the current can be controlled in that sector alone and the technician can quickly uh, put their hands onto the fault. Reactors are basically inductive uh, devices which got a uh, high impedance on high frequencies. Now, as you can see here, there are basically uh, uh, several ways in which you can connect your reactor into your circuit. As you can see, we've got shunt reactors here. Now, let's take an example here where you've got a load here. Now, in case you get a short circuit at this point here. Now, if you get a short circuit here at this point here, okay? Now, if you have an inclusion of a reactor here, now, without the reactor, let's say this line will have a per unit reactance of 0, 0,1 per unit, okay? Now, with an inclusion of a reactor, the per unit impedance of this line will increase. So, this means in case of a short circuit current here, the reactor here is going to add the impedance of this line. So, it will pump it up to, let's say, 0, 0,5 per unit. And what this will do then, it will decrease the short circuit current magnitude to this line here, thereby limiting the amount of damages that can be caused onto uh, the load here. So that basically in a nutshell what reactors are able to do to protect your equipment in case of a short circuit. So as you can see here, reactors, they can be installed in different locations on your system as you can see we just place the reactors in series with your feeder or your load you can connect them in parallel as a shunt reactor and so on and so forth we're going to get to that in a moment so these reactors they're really very reliable in limiting your short circuit current and they are very easy to install. As you can see here, we've got an example of an echo reactors, which is one of the most commonly uh, used type of reactors. So it's the same one that we can find in many applications. So these, as you can see, this echo reactor is mostly made of a non conductive material. So you're not going to find uh, a lot of ferromagnetic uh, material in it so which makes this type of reactor very suitable for high frequencies application of current limits and in mostly found in substations as we just discussed earlier like in any systems or application there are always uh, disadvantages as well that must be taken account of so in case of reactors uh, the disadvantages here are really obvious because we are now inserting uh, uh, an impedance, right? We are inserting an impedance in series with our feeder here. Now, bear in mind that this reactor will have a high impedance when there is a short circuit current passing, right? 
Now, that high impedance will then limit the short circuit current to really a considerable amount, okay? So, which means in a normal circumstances, in a normal flow of current, this reactor will have a low impedance, but still it is going to have a voltage drop here. So, if you've got a system of, let's say, uh, we're talking about, for instance, a 33 kilovolt line here. If you got a 33 kilovolt line, you are you will have a significant voltage drop here, even in a normal flow uh, of your current. So that voltage drop must be taken into consideration. So that is one of the disadvantage of having reactors, and also uh, including a reactors in your system will uh, obviously add a cost onto your system. So that must also be taken account. But above all, reactors, they really, they are reliable in limiting a short circuit current, especially in large power system network where they're dealing with very heavy current and they increase reliability and the safety of your equipment, I mean, of your system, right? Now, let's now look at the different ways of how you can connect your reactors. As we've already shown here, your reactor can be connected in series and also uh, in parallel with your system. Now, here, as you can see, we've got here bus bar reactors, okay? Now, in this bus bar reactors uh, system or a ring system, now you've got your reactors basically connected between generators on your bus bar. So this here is going to help in case of a short circuit at any point. So if you've got a short circuit here at this point here, right, you've got your fault here. So all of a sudden, there's going to be a lot of current coming from these two generator, generator two and three, they're all going to rush into the fault and generator one. So depriving your feeders B and C from receiving power. Now, because of the reactors in between these bus bar, the amount of current contribution, fault current contribution from generator two and generator three are going to be limited by these two reactors here. So you're going to have less fault current on feeder A and contribution from generator one. So that is one of the uh, advantage of having reactors between your uh, generators on bus bars. Now the next one is obviously uh, reactors connected in series with your generators. As you can see here, now you can have your fault in any location here. Each one of these generators, they already been sorted with having reactors in series with them. So basically the fault uh, magnitude uh, from generator one, two, three will be dampened from the reactors connected with them in series and this will reduce the entire fault on your system, fault current on your system. And the next one is uh, reactors connected straight onto your feeders. Now, this is the same example that I've taken here by basically placing uh, this reactor in series with your load here. This is the same type of scenario. These are totally independent because they are now in parallel here. So if you've got a fault here at this point A here, so basically this generator one is going to supply to point A, generator two and generator three is going to supply to point A via this reactor. Now these two reactors here, they're basically going to become almost useless because now all the current demand is now going to be flowing from one particular point they are all going to follow the money they're going to want to come to where the fault is okay so rendering all these other two reactors useless but then obviously your point a will be protected by this reactor here now a similar situation will occur if you've got a fault on b and a fault on c another bus bar system with your reactors is the tie bar system as you can see here where you've got your generators connected in series with your reactors to your main bus bar system as you can see here and your feeders being taken or tapped straight from your individual generators now the advantage of this system is that you can connect uh, another generator onto your system here without having the need to change the existing installation you basically just tap into the system. 
right now you still going to have the advantages of limiting your short circuit current between your generators in case of a fault condition that may occur so that is uh, in a nutshell what are reactors i am 100 percent sure by now you have a very solid understanding of or rather a basic understanding of what reactors are and their usage in electrical substation thank you for watching if you found this tutorial useful please subscribe and give this uh, tutorial a thumbs up until next time cheers